my abusive absentee father who had not been in my life for years up till that point decided to come back into my life to take control over my career and my money that's why i disappeared he was bringing random ass women around all the time and literally hooking up with them in front of me i was a child Welcome to a somewhat emergency secret society. Today, we're going to be diving into the story of internet sensation Lil Tay. Her disappearance and the way she's now coming back in a huge and unexpected way. From being rumored to be dead by the entire world, to her brand new single Sucker for Green, to the emotional, physical, and sexual abuse she allegedly suffered at the hands of her own father and mother, who Lil Tay claims to this day tried to take her money and run. So first, to start the story, we need to hop back in a time machine and travel back to the year 2018, to the brief period of time Lil Tay had her rise, and ultimately, her fall. So first off, y'all, her age varies determined by which website you look on. Like, even BuzzFeed News was confused by how old she was back in 2018. So this has been, like, a long-running problem. Because back then, her father told the publication that she was 11. But it was widely reported that Tay was only 9 years old. Heck, the account even posted a passport back in 2018 that said she was 16. But it's also widely believed that that's just photoshopped because the Instagram terms of service say you have to be 13 years old to own an account. So, so people think that that might have just been for that but for the purposes of this video i'm just gonna go with the alleged like widely believed age that she was nine years old during the three-month height of her fame that would make her born in 2009 to angela tian and, and christopher j hope who's a lawyer now it's important to note this part of the story because i truly do believe that was lil tay's downfall i'm not even talking about the death hoax yet i'm literally just talking about her downfall in 2018 because she was only famous for three months like i did not know that now lil tay's parents never got married but tay did have another 16 year old brother who is only half related this brother was instrumental in lil tay's come up as at the time everything catered to 16 year old boys was centered around you guessed it flex culture Yeezy red october's Fragment one, off-white Nike. White Yeezys that are actually dirty because I actually wear them. Yeezys, more Yeezys, more Yeezys, more Yeezys. Off-white Air Maxes and more Yeezys. And one last pair of Yeezys. YouTubers like Rice Gum, Jeffree Star, and Jake Paul were all blowing up, showing off their lavish mansions and their luxury cars or their 50 Supreme hoodies. Like I remember a video of Rice Gum walking past the Supreme store in the specific Supreme hoodie and like giving it to a homeless man or something. It was like always stuff like that. It was so so tasteless. It was definitely the rise of the hype beast, and it seemed like everyone was cashing in. Then came in a nine-year-old Lil Tay. You already know what it is. Lil Tay, the youngest flex of the century. I'm only nine years old, but I'm richer than all y'all broke-ass haters. This female kitchen is bigger than your whole entire living room, and I got four more houses. Y'all haters are already older than me, but y'all still talking shit. I'm a nine-year-old millionaire, and I be smoking dope, bitch. Y'all have iPhone 5, and I'll be drinking your college tuition, bitch. See this? These are butterfly wings. Y'all haven't seen this car in your life. I've been driving this around the Beverly Hills area, and I'm only 9 years old. I got no license, but I ain't ever gonna get no license. Lil Tay just got verified. Y'all all said I wouldn't make it, but bitch, look, I'm verified now. Lil Tay, the youngest fuck of the century. Bitch, I got verified. Mm -hmm. Message to all y'all broke ass. Ass 
big. Her rise was subtle but effective. Her entire career started with her half brother posting up photos of Tay posing with luxury cars, designer, and mansions. And since this was like super popular content at the time, and Lil Tay seemed to be the youngest one doing it, Instagram pushed this content like crazy. I remember there were some days in 2018 where I literally couldn't make it two scrolls without seeing a little Tay clip on either her page or a fan page or a meme page or like one of the old Vine pages I was still following. She was actually everywhere. You know, there was a rumor online that you okay. sell cocaine. Okay. What the hell? Who's got a tougher security, your security team or Daniel Goldie? You don't need to ask dumbass questions. Can I ask you a question? Oh, uh, sure, go ahead. Why your mama make you so ugly? Do you go to school? I'm a Harvard drummer. Nice. You like me. What's funny is the first video I ever saw of her was low-key insufferable. Because of what they were asking her to say, I mean, they were literally asking her to say slurs. It was so bad. This Lil Tay, bitch, I'm richer than all y'all broke-ass niggas. 30 on my wrist. So I high key just kind of skipped the entire thing and was like, oh my gosh, like a little kid saying all this stuff, like that seems like a lot to unpack. Like, I'm just gonna move on, you know? And y'all, this was like before Free Britney and just at the beginning of the mental health reckoning in the media, so people weren't alert. So what did they do? They took the outrage bait and flooded Lil Tay's comments with hate. And honestly, like, it's so bad because her brother probably saw this happening and while he was only 16 at the time, it's like, oh my God, like I was 16 doing YouTube too, like. But okay, things do get interesting when Tay's manager decides to discuss a video going viral of her using the n-word tay's manager is clearly not happy about it however her brother jason tries to explain why they did it most of the african-american people that were helping you know they were they were advising that it, it wasn't racist it was just another term to address your friends you know if you see that you stop especially if you're like <laughs> you're putting someone else up like that and you're still putting them up like she was nine years old that is really really young and i do remember some of my old friends like hating on her so like disproportionately because they were full-blown adults and like while you're allowed to dislike someone to go and send a bunch of nasty messages to, like a nine-year-old and uh, y'all that's not that's not for me but i do remember a lot of people questioning it too like what was this if it was fake if it was actually a little nine-year-old girl saying all these things and talking like a grown-up because it just seemed too strange to be true because around this time stars like whoa vicky and ava louise were taking notes from bad baby and making their marks on the internet so it wasn't completely outside of the realm of possibility that she could be doing this on her own accord but it was never really confirmed who entirely was behind the little tay account so everything is as fine and dandy in Lil Tayville as it ever could be, right? She started posting more rap videos and flex videos and actually getting millions and millions of views. But there was one problem with this. While YouTubers like Rice Gum and Jake Paul were looking absolutely insufferable on their own accords, it's every day, bro, with the Disney Channel flow. Five mil on YouTube in six months, never done before. Swore my reflection like a mirror is. Yeah. Wanna flex on my wrist, I put some ice on it. I wanna make her with it, maybe put some rice on it. Talk Lil Tay was one, a child, actually only nine years old, not old enough to commit to the massive digital footprint that she was creating. And on top of that, it wasn't even really her. As on one fateful day in 2018, the entire Lil Tay facade would come crashing down when a behind the scenes video of Lil Tay and her brother filming a video leaked. Let's just say it was not what people were expecting at all. Bro, oh, wait, go back, go back and say like, no, you, you, you broke, broke ass bitch. You still, you, you out here, you were out here like with your irrelevant ass. You, you making a video on me? Like bitch, I'm way more relevant than you. You're trying to be relevant and you're trying to be like me. Mommy, stop! I was filming! Lil Tay be popping on YouTube right now. Um, what do you do? You need to be like more ignorant. You have to be like, ooh, Lil Tay, Lil Tay out here. Wait, what did he say again? You still irrelevant like I said last time. <sighs> what, what do I say? I'm a tre trend. I'm a 
trend maker and you a trend follower. You a little. Like maybe some people who thought it was staged, but like people were not expecting this. That's right. Her brother would tell her exactly what to say. And Lil Tay, being the talented little actress that she was, would sell it like it was her own words. This formula, while prosperous for the first three months, would prove to be the ultimate downfall of Lil Tay. Yes, the youngest flexor of the century is a straight up phenom, but it's raising huge concerns about who exactly is controlling her. I care about the kids, okay? And Lil Tay is a hostage. A hostage to who? Well, say hello to Mama Tay and Brother Tay. Recall Lil Tay's mom, Angela Tian, was reportedly fired from her real estate firm after her boss realized Angela used his car and various properties for Tay's flex videos. And now we be living in the hill. See that view? Y'all don't have that view. Yes, if Tay's TMZ appearance wasn't the peak, Good Morning America now wants in on the action. As for her schooling. I'm a Harvard dropout. What city is Harvard in? Um, I kind of forgot because I haven't been there in a long time. Y'all seen I rent my car? She's the nine-year-old whose outrageous stunts <laughs> and foul mouth bragging about luxury homes and cars she claims to own. And now we be living in the hill. See that view? Y'all don't have that view. And I be holding your mama's rank. Who's getting tons of notoriety and a whopping two million followers on Instagram. How would you respond to critics who would say, oh, you're just going to try to profit off your daughter now? No one's forcing me to do this. That's not true that she wants to make money off of me. And what about those homes she claims to own? GMA talked to mom Angie's former boss at a Vancouver real estate firm, who told us little Tay filmed using his car and some of his properties for sale, all without his approval. I didn't shoot in anyone else's house. You didn't shoot in anyone else's house? Just like... No one has proof that I did. And who's behind the shocking content on Lil Tay's social media accounts? My mom doesn't run social media accounts. I use my own Instagram. These images will live on and follow you for the rest of your life. Is a nine-year-old really capable of making this kind of decision? This is my decision. I'm happy with what I'm doing. I'm going to have my name on one of these stars one day. We were surprised to find a precocious, soft-spoken nine-year-old whose mom says she's a straight-A student. YouTube stars like Jake Paul are either co-opting her act or trashing it. Snoop Dogg even accusing her 16-year-old brother of coaching her. A lot of people are going to say this and that. We just we just keep going. What are all the things that you do? Swimming, skating, piano. She is a well-mannered and a great kid. But that's not what comes across on the internet. People think it's like funny. I guess because I'm nine years old and I've accomplished so much. I don't think a lot of people are believing that you're making millions of dollars at nine. If they don't believe that, then I don't really like care. I know y'all are rice gum fans, but just stop reporting my videos. If you actually think rice gum is beefing with a nine year old, then you just might want to think about that for a second. Me and rice gum are friends. Just stop reporting my videos. I have a dream. I'm trying to make my mom proud. Like y'all are here, hey on me. You have a family. Go enjoy that. Why are you wasting your time reporting my videos and taking them down? I'm trying to chase my dreams. I'm trying to spread positivity and y'all are just here hating on me for no reason. Me and Rice Gum are friends. Like, I want to make my mom a proud. You guys are not doing anything with your life. You may not see it, but I'm trying to do, I'm trying to accomplish something. And you guys are preventing me from that. Oh. You don't look very happy. I mean, that was before. Like, now I'm happier than before. What's your reaction to all of the haters who are basically online bullying your daughter? We choose just not ignore them. She has a passion passion and a dream this was everywhere like that i feel like was the final huge boom of lil tay until now but by june of that same year in 2018 lil tay's entire account was completely wiped a spokesperson for the family probably christopher her father and manager at this time told buzzfeed news that it was for a rebrand but with that the account went silent for four months that is until disturbing allegations against lil tay's father christopher began popping up all over the page posting quote Christopher Hope was naked in front of Tay quite often her name was changed to hashtag free Lil Tay and a series of bizarre images and photos began popping up all 
across the account. Now, it's unclear if this was her brother attempting to gain control over the account or if this was Tay crying out for help. But the latter seemed possible, as a video of Lil Tay crying would be posted to the account that same week. But you have to come in there tonight. You really do. There's no other option here. We don't have to go inside right now. We can just go in my car. We'll just drive somewhere and talk about it, okay? I'm not going. Yeah, I think you should come with me and we'll just talk about it. Angela? You gotta follow what the judge said. You have, you have to encourage her. You, you have the responsibility. No, you didn't. You literally lived like six minutes away, but you never you even came to visit me. So you don't even care about me. Well, I want to talk about these things. It's not gonna get and would accumulate millions and millions of views. An attorney who claimed to be Lil Tay's father sent a cease and desist letter to Instagram on Monday, saying he requested the account be suspended, quote, until resolution of the issues surrounding its use by the courts here in British Columbia. This raised my alarm bells, because it's very reminiscent of Britney Spears' situation. Like, Lil Tay blows up online at only nine years old and money-hungry family all fights over her assets like a pack of deranged mangy wolves. Like, listen to this. Lil Tay's attorney father wrote in that letter to Instagram that Lil Tay's brother, quote, Jason, had taken over the account and he has either personally or encouraged others or negligently allowed the account to be used by third parties to conduct criminal extortion and harassment as well as the torts of defamation and libel. And that was all we really heard. And this was over five years ago. For years, Lil Tay would become a distant memory for the internet as her account was completely silent. And as we know, with Instagram, relevancy fades so quickly. She was a huge flash in the pan, and I think because it was so shocking to see a young girl behaving like this, like, it definitely made an impression on people, and I think they really remembered her, and like, the name was short, she was saying slurs, it was kind of hard to forget. Anyway, let's come back to 2021, when the Lil Tay account would come back briefly and make even more claims against Lil Tay's father. According to BuzzFeed News, activity briefly resumed on the account in 2021 with several posts, presumably from her brother, that accused Christopher Hope of physical and mental abuse and stealing all of Lil Tay's money amid a supposed business dispute between Sang and Hope on one side and Lil Tay, Jason, and their mother, Angela Tian, on the other. TMZ actually gave some clarity to the situation back in 2020 when they said that Lil Tay's mother was fighting for Tay to be able to do whatever she wanted, including, quote, foul-mouthed Instagram videos and back to her rap career. Whereas as her father was pushing for a more traditional career approach with singing and acting. Photos including two with Lil Tay having marks on her face were posted to the account, along with a message reading, this was the moment in 2018 my mom showed Tay the court order from her abusive father demanding custody, money, and control over her career. Starting today, she will be fighting for her life in the Supreme Court of Canada. Tay has no money left to pay lawyers for fighting for her freedom. Her father has stolen everything from her. She has been physically and mentally abused by her father and his current wife. Please visit the link in bio for the full story in the GoFundMe and donate and share. Your donation will go towards Tay's legal fees, giving her a fighting chance at freedom in court. You are Tay's last hope in saving her from a life of abuse. We greatly appreciate any help Tay can get. Every dollar and share counts. Hashtag Save Lil Tay. Then again, after that, there was this silence, probably because the legal battle was happening behind the scenes, but the public had heard still nothing. And at that point, it had already been three years since Lil Tay's first come up. So public interest was definitely wavering, and it looked like we had seen the last of Lil Tay and her family. That is, until 2023. In August of 2023, it would be reported that Lil Tay was tragically found dead with her brother. Her Instagram account posting at the time saying it was with heavy heart that we share the devastating news of our beloved Claire's sudden and tragic passing. 
we have no words to express the unbearable loss and indescribable pain. This outcome was entirely unexpected and has left us all in shock. Oh my gosh, that sounds so sketchy. Her brother's passing adds an even more unimaginable depth to our grief. During this time, wait, if, wait, is this supposed to be the parents talking? What parent talks like that about each kid? Wait, wait, they're like, we're really sad about Lil Tay. Also, like, the brother's sad too, but like, damn, Lil Tay. Like, during this time of immense sorrow, we kindly ask for privacy as we grieve this overwhelming loss. As the circumstances surrounding Claire and her brother's passing are still under investigation, Claire will forever remain in our hearts, her absence leaving an irreplaceable void that will be felt by all who knew and loved her." End quote. The entire world would mourn a now young teen Tay who died amongst a gruesome custody battle and no career. However, this story would be very short-lived and it would all turn out to be a hoax. Yeah. Somebody who was reported, widely reported yesterday, was dead. We're talking a 14-year-old. Mm -hmm. And we found out that person is alive. The story is crazy. So why don't we start with, with who this person is? Lil Tay. Uh, Lil Tay, a social media influencer who you, if you've been around this long, you'll remember was huge on social media about, oh, five years ago? And then she kind of disappeared. Um, well, yesterday, some tragic news was reported on her social media, on her Instagram account, which, by the way, had been, you know, hadn't been used it was in about for five, five years. years. Um, a post went up saying that uh, they regretted to say that uh, Lil Tay, as well as her older brother, uh, had passed away, that they were, uh, deceased and that they were found what we were hearing is that they were found um and their home. home in the home and so we obviously we jumped on this there was something about it we, and we, we, we say we lot, jumped on it we started we started making working phone calls, on it right? and and there was something about it that just didn't feel right and there there were reports in very from various outlets that little day had died and we had a lot of discussions all day long yesterday and there was something about it that just didn't sit right. right. And we were thinking, is we she really tell what dead? It was, though. We couldn't tell what it was. And then we got word this morning. 24 um, hours after this all happened. And, th and that is what adds to the mystery here. But yes, 24 hours later, uh, we just broke this story just uh, a, a couple of hours ago. And Lil Tay is not dead. Yeah, Lil Tay is very much alive. And now, <laughs> what we're trying to figure out is what happened. What happened in the last 24 hours? Yeah, I, and it's kind of crazy. It took this long. Both Little Tay and her brother, we should say, are are safe and alive because that statement had said that he had died too. What she claims is that her Instagram account was hacked, and she said, "Look, all day yesterday, I was answering calls from family and friends who were heartbroken, thinking that I was dead. I'm very much alive now." She says the account was hacked, she's worked with Meta, she's gotten her account back, and says that she will give kind of the full details in the near future, which if you kind of know the, the internet celebrity, social media celebrity kind of playbook, that's what they do. They launch a teaser and then they launch a, a confessional video or something like that, where they will kind of tell the full story. Now, that's what this feels like, of course, there are a lot of questions to be answered until we get there, but good news is she's safe and happy and alive. Bad news is uh, there's still a lot to be answered. Yeah, well, and also I mean, just just to kind of pick up on what you just said, Brad, that she is going to be talking about this in more detail in the future. The big question is, she knew and her family knew that there were reports all over the world that she had died. She knew and that yet yeah. there was radio silence for 24 well, here's hours. The thing. But even more than that, Harvey, she in this statement that we got, she says she knew that her account had been hacked. She knew what the report was that was going on. She said that she was getting phone calls from loved ones right. all day who were in tears thinking that she was dead. So she was aware of all that. Yet so, never came out and, and said, said say, I'm alive, I'm okay. The family didn't come out and say it. Reps didn't come out and say it. Radio silence for 24 hours as more and more outlets started saying, Lil Tay is dead. 
A lot of people didn't believe it at first. I mean, Lil Tay has kind of been known for just outrage bait content, so people would expect a death hoax from her. But like, I was very upset. I'm like, I obviously questioned it a little bit. I was like, okay, what's going on here? Cause she's just like kind of known for just being a publicity like superstar. However, Lil Tay would like go to TMZ really not that quickly, I guess, for a death hoax, but only 24 hours later. And she said, I want to make it clear that my brother and I are safe and alive, but I'm completely heartbroken and struggling to even find the right words to say. It's been a very traumatizing 24 hours. All day yesterday, I was bombarded with endless, heartbreaking, and tearful phone calls from loved ones, all while trying to sort out this mess. She also says, My Instagram account was compromised by a third party and used to spread jarring misinformation and rumors regarding me, to the point that even my name was wrong. My legal name is Tatian, not Claire Hope. Now, again, a month would pass and there would be more silence. So people were kind of wondering, like, is she going to come back? Is she just going to disappear again? That's what most people were thinking because she usually comes back like once every three years, says something and disappears. However, on September 30th, Lil Tay would shut Instagram down and go on live for the first time in years. The live stream would start with a countdown, playing a new song called Sucker for Green. Then she moved to the piano to play her heart out, and then to her guitar to play Metallica. And now when I tell y'all this like actually hit the internet so surprisingly because everyone was expecting Lil Tay's music to be like her last music and for this to be like a rap or whatever. But like first she opens up the live stream playing these instruments, like not just playing them, but like literally she is a wildly talented. And I don't know if that was just like preemptively strike the like, oh, she's so untalented rumors with this new song because she is switching genres. But she opens it up, plays these instruments and sits down to tell her story. Lil Tay's back. It's been five years and y'all still broke. The go is back. Five years and I'm still the youngest one out. Five years and y'all bitches are still broke. So don't take it out on me. Why the fuck are y'all coming at me for? Y'all hating ass bitches were hating on me when I was nine years old. Talking all this shit when you don't fucking know me. So stop fucking talking. You did not come up. You had five years to come up and you didn't. So don't blame me, bitch. Five years. That being said, let's just get the fuck into it because I have a lot of shit to say. But she very quickly snapped out of it and detailed one of the most horrific stories I've ever come across on this channel. Lil Tay finally told her truth and her story, and she was able to reveal it to the entire world. Lil Tay was alleging her father had been allegedly abusing her all these years and had attempted to take every last penny that Tay had made. Why I've been gone. So, where do I even start? Five years ago, I became famous, and my abusive absentee father, who had not been in my life for years up till that point, decided to come back into my life to take control over my career and my money. That's why I disappeared. He started a court case. He started a court case to silence me so I could not speak on what was happening and so he could take control over my money. His name is Chris Hope. This is him. This is Chris Hope. All right. He was bringing, when I was living with him, this is all, these are all events that happened before I became famous because he had not been in my life for years before then. He was bringing random ass women around all the time and literally hooking up with them in front of me. I was a child. And one of those women was named Shima Ali, his assistant. This is her. These are not private photos. This, this is her Facebook wallpaper. These are not private photos. And I was awakened by them next to me in the bed. And I could literally, she had her hand 
on my leg and I was frozen in place. I was so young at that time. I had no fucking idea what was going on and I was just frozen in place. And then I moved and then that's when she took her leg off my hand. They were literally in bed next to me. They did not care and they were literally disregarding the fact that I was even there. That's fucking insane. He was hooking up with random women all the time and he found them off of Craigslist. This is his Craigslist email to a random woman who had an ad. Okay, this is the email trying to hook up with people. This is my mom talking to somebody about it after she found out about it. Out of all of the random ass women that came and went, mostly Asian women, because he has an Asian fetish, if you didn't know, only one of them is prominent. And this is where Honey Hope comes in the story. So Honey Hope, she is Christopher John Hope's wife currently and he met her online when she was living in the philippines and she is a career scammer when she was living in the philippines she was scamming as a career that's her right there that's her and chris but they started having a bond and he wanted to fly her to canada which is exactly what happened and she left the father of her son to be with chris because she thought that he would provide her with a luxurious good life and bring her to canada and all that Things just went fucking downhill from there. When I was living with them, like I said, they were still doing the most out of pocket sexual shit in front of me. She would get out of the shower and she wouldn't even put clothes on. And they were always playing these sexually inappropriate movies in front of me, openly in front of me. So that's what, that was the norms. It's fucking sick. And she, she would always take out her anger onto me. If her son did anything wrong, it would become my fault. And she, she punched me, she pinched me, pinching me was a really big thing. Chris mainly shoved me. And this is one of the worst incidents that happened. Physical abuse of me was so common in this household that her son caught onto it and he, he was doing it to me too, and they would just egg him on. They forced me to watch many horror movies when I was in their house. One of them was Bride of Chucky, and I was, when they put it on, I couldn't get out of the room, and I was literally sobbing. And I tried to put my face into a pillow when they were playing the horror movie in front of me, and honey hope she had me in a chokehold so i couldn't escape and i had to sit through the entire bride of chucky movie when i was young as fuck and then afterwards there's a closet in the room so while i was still in the chokehold she put me she shoved me into the closet and locked me in there and she said go play with chucky i thought i was going to die I was scared as fuck. This traumatized me. They are sick ass people. This is not the only horror movie that I watched, but this is one of the most traumatizing memories that I have, is Bride of Chucky. They were feeding me the most disgusting ass food. What is this shit? This is what they were packing me for lunch. My mom had discovered that they were packing me this bullshit for lunch, rotten, frozen, parasitic, moldy. Look at this, who? That's candy, that's expired candy. These are my mom's text messages to him, sending him these photos and like, why are you sending this to your child for school? He discovered that my mom was sending me lunches after she found out that I, I was being given rotten food at his place. So she started dropping me off fresh lunches at school. And then what does he say? He says, if she continues doing that, he will continue to deduct child support. And my mom was like, what are you talking about? Because how am I supposed to eat what he's giving me? That Look at that fuck shit. What is that? She was giving me fresh homemade food and he was getting angry at her for doing that because I wasn't eating it. But I wasn't eating it anyways because that's disgusting. They did not dress me properly. These are shoes I was wearing. The soles are broken. 
he was so preoccupied while I was wearing broken ass shoes he was so preoccupied with providing Honey Hope his wife with these designer bags this is not even everything. He was literally fulfilling all of her fantasies while I was wearing those broken ass shoes. You will provide this immoral, horrifying, gold digging bitch with all of her fantasies, everything, and you can't even put proper shoes onto your own child. How much fucking money does he owe me? He owes me $250,000 in child support. He still owes it, by the way. He still hasn't paid it. He's legally obligated to pay it. He hasn't paid it. What does that tell you about him? That tells you every- Who the fuck owes $250,000 in child support? I witnessed him shoving my mom into walls and punching her. And my brother, he was a kid at that time too. And when he tried to go help my mom, he screamed for help. He shoved the- he shoved into the fucking floor, kneeled on his back. And he's, he's like, get the fuck off of me. And my mom was screaming and crying. And I cannot forget those memories because he's racist as fuck. Do you know one of the reasons that he said to the court that he should have custody of me after I became famous? He said it was because my mom was letting me associate with black and Hispanic people in the entertainment industry. And he said that he, they were going to get me into drugs or they were gonna steal my money or they're gonna exploit me. There have been a shit ton of random ass people, frauds, who have claimed to be my manager. I have never had a manager. All those people are con artists. They're exploiting my name for clout and for industry credit. And they, okay, this is where it gets into the death hoax. So, as you all know, Chris Hope was the one that did the death hoax. He was trying to sabotage me. Meanwhile, he was working with this other con artist that was claiming to be my manager, and they had a crypto coin together. Their plan was to fake my death and then promote the crypto coin. This proves how much the press did not give a fuck about facts. They cared about slandering my name. They did not do any fact checking. As long as you claim to be my manager, they would just take your word for it. As long as you, cl as long as anyone claimed that my mom got fired from her job just for controversy purposes, they would just report on it, even though it's not fucking true. I hope you realize how much bullshit has been surrounding my name from the moment I became famous till now. And I hope this cleared shit up for you. Biggest takeaway, my mom has always been supportive of me. She's been there for me my entire life. And we had both been abused by Christopher John Hope, my abusive absentee father. He is not the fucking good guy here. He wanted control over my career and my money. And I had to go through, me and my family had to go through even more years of abuse through the court system because of him. But in the end, we won. I am free now. And I thank God every day for it. I thank my mom for it. It's been a tough five years. But I'm free now. And I just dropped my music video. I'm ready to move on. We are done with this. I'm fucking back. I dropped my music video. Sucker for Green. Link in bio. Post it on my page. Thank you for supporting me. Go watch the video, bitch. Now, Lil Tay's father clapped back after these claims were made public and said in August of 2023, the person who was responsible for that Instagram post, as well as anyone repeating the completely false and libelous accusation within it, are virtually certain to become defendants in a defamation lawsuit. Everything stated is 100% false, and I trust that this should be obvious to anyone who knows me or the long history of absurd and untrue statements made by the various people who, who have controlled the Instagram account. Oh, much like her ill-fated reality TV show in 2018, Lil Tay's music video blew up her story even further. 
and it began raising a lot of questions that their family attorneys actually needed to address. Will Tay posting on Instagram, Lauren McLean KC and Fraser McLean of McLean Law are the Vancouver, Canada family law attorneys for Tay Tian's mother, Angel Tian. We have been asked to clarify media confusion as to the current state of the family law proceedings, including custody, child parenting, and child support. Given privacy concerns related to the children, we provide a brief status update on the result in the British Columbia Supreme Court. McLean Law successfully obtained orders for our clients that have enabled her daughter to advance her career, including orders for one retroactive child support owed by the father since 2014, amounting to approximately $275,000, ongoing monthly child support from the father plus additional monthly expenses, three sole day-to-day -day and final decision-making powers and responsibilities in the best interests of Tae Tian and Mrs. Tian, four Mrs. Tian is the person entitled to sign contracts. 5. Tae Tian's primary residency being with her mother, Miss Tian, and 6. Entitlement to relocate outside of Vancouver for Miss Tian and Tae Tian. So the one that immediately jumps out is that her mother is the one who is able to sign contracts. So if she gets signed to some sort of record label or is already, that would all be through her mother. So they're going back and forth about this custody battle. They're talking about all the inner workings of this uh, alleged abuse that happened. And amidst all this, Lil Tae drops the music video of the century called Sucker for Green. Now, I want to take a second to actually talk about this music video because Tay has clearly been in pop star boot camp or something. I mean, no one can just like sing and play like instruments like that, like out of nowhere, right? Like, I feel like that's a thing that we've evaded this entire time when talking about Lil Tay is that was she able to perform this whole time? Like, has she been able to sing? Has she been able to play the guitar this entire time? But y'all, this music video would debut to much fanfare. Like, actually, the last time I checked, it was number one on the trending tab on YouTube. And a bunch of people who were expecting to hate it watched it and were very pleasantly surprised. So who knows, y'all? She might be the next pop star. Honestly, that song, I literally can knock it out of my head. I think I've probably played it a, a, probably a thousand times. <laughs> so those are all the public details of the court case I was able to find through the news and the media. Ultimately, since a lot of this is in the family court systems, like, like we learned with Britney, it's sometimes much harder to find things because everything's sealed for the anonymity of children or medical or HIPAA law, or at least that's what they say. <laughs> and that just shows me that Christopher probably is a lawyer because he knew the family courts would probably have the least amount of oversight. And it is sad. Like while researching this video, I really saw how much privilege it is to be a business manager or a lawyer. Like tons of articles discrediting Tay clearly put there intentionally by someone densely populated Google when I searched her name. So there's no telling what could happen. But for now, I'm just going to be streaming Sucker for Green, hoping for the album. And just hoping she's okay, because y'all, that Instagram was very, very worrying. Anyway, I guarantee you this is not the last we've seen of Lil Tay, so if you want to hear updates, be sure to subscribe to this channel. And this has been Secret Society. I will see y'all later. Bye!